Greetings. My name is Guy Dornsey. This is the show Change the World here on Spotlight, where I like to invite guests on who share my belief that we really need to work hard to make this planet the beautiful place that we know it can be in our hearts. And my guest today is my longtime friend, Natalie Chambers. <laughs> Who was, you're looking at me this way, forget the camera, <laughs> just look this way, right? Okay. And you've been a hero of mine because you're such a champion for farmland. You're such a champion for nature. Now you've stood up and got yourself elected to be a Saanich councillor. And we'll come to it, you're the author of a book called Saving Farmland, The Fight for Real Food. So tell me first about what, what in your childhood got you on this path? Um, okay, well, first of all, I wanted to say, Guy Dauncey, uh hardly I'm your hero. You have been <laughs> a hero of mine, and I believe that you have helped make me the person that I am today. You blush, had blush, a, blush. a factor, <laughs> and I actually write about you okay. in my book. But how so did you get into this? How did I get into yes. this? Well, um, it was a long story. Um, as you know, I come from the Land Conservancy, and um, yeah. so I came directly from University Restoration Ecology, okay. which was a different form of looking so why at... Go, why did you choose Restoration Ecology at university? Um, because the ability to restore ecosystems became very um, important to me after taking conservation biology and yeah. realizing... I'm pushing you back. For, I'm pushing yes. you younger and younger. What's yes. happening in your teenage years that draws okay. you to nature as opposed okay. to accountancy. Okay, I know exactly what it is. Um, <laughs> I moved here um, from Alberta at yes. 12 years old. Right. And um, my father is was part of the 442 squadron, so um, yeah. he was um, he he was on the provider ship flying helicopters and then out at yeah. Comox doing rescue and we came here from this flat world of Alberta and I came to and the you went, wilderness. You went, oh my God. <laughs> I'm home and it was absolutely phenomenal. And I write about my early um, okay. nature wanderings in Saanich. And right. um, we grew up off Lily Street. And um, I attribute my um, connection with nature and my desire to study ecology from that early time. Right. And um, so finding nature and sanctuary yeah. as a child. And um, I actually, um, one, my first memory actually when I was a kid um, was on Calling Lake, Alberta. Yeah. And it was actually, um, I was like a baby and I yes. was laying on yeah. the ground and um, I remember seeing some dragonflies and bees pollinating the yarrow. Yeah. I didn't know it was yarrow. Right. I didn't yeah. know yeah. what kind of insects they were, but um, yeah, so that was a really profound kind of awakening. I right. had a, uh, and I made promises to those species when I was a kid. What were the promises? I promised I'd take care of them. And um, yeah, that was a really neat thing. So we grew up off Lily Street and it was fully in the territory of the Songhees and the, yes. the Guangan har harvesters. And I didn't know that, of course. Yes. For me, I was in a beautiful place right. and I used to pick handfuls of camas. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes, I know now I just uh, yeah. <laughs> about that, but I grew up in those special places. Yes. and. They really did awaken me to nature, and I didn't know they were very special that way. Right. I just, and um, so I had a cultural awakening, yeah. and it was started then. So by the time I was 19, I was studying with Carol McGrath up on Swan Lake yes, and yes, um, yes. beside Willie and I had a 10-year apprenticeship there. Really? Wow. You're and volunteering, right? Yes. yes. And um, then I went to UVic to study with Nancy Turner and restoration go. ecology. So, um, yes. With Nancy Turner, you, you'll be getting, knowing everything you... <laughs> she's amazing. She did yes. a plant tour of a piece of land we were trying to save up in Yellow Point where I live. Yes. And it was in September when everything was yellow after a summer oh. drought. And she named a hundred different <laughs> plants while they were yellow. Like, just amazing, mm -hmm. that sense of knowledge, right? You know? um, in my last year, I went on a two-week ethnobotany trip with Dr. Turner into yeah. the Shoe and I met wow. many of the subjects of her study. Um, so Dr. Mary Thomas, yes. who, who acquired an yes. honorary doctorate from the University of British Columbia, yeah. and Ron and Mary Ignace. And then you got into farming. And then I fell in love with the farmer, <laughs> which oh, was a bit of a, right. it was a bit of a haphazard. With, with 27 acres, right? <laughs> yes, yes. So um, 
that's another story entirely. Um, we kind of had a plan, and um, when we got together, his conventional agriculture turned to agroecology, right, and okay. um, we started operating the farm as close to a natural so ecosystem. So this is Madrona Farm yes. south of Mount Doug, right? That's It's Mid-Slope Mount Douglas. Mid -slope, okay. Right. Yes, and it's the former hunting corridor of the Songhees people, and uh -huh. there's funerary remains all up Pakuls. Really? Yes. Wow. So Pakuls is part of the original creation story for and the when Coast you say Salish. Pakuls, that's the Coast Salish name for Mount Doug, right? That's right, yes. Mount Douglas, and it's Whitehead, and um, you know, um, many other First Nations groups in Canada came from different places, but our Coast Salish, they emerged straight from the ice. So we live in a very special place here in yes. Saanich. Um, you know, Cordova Bay and all of yeah. those have contributing factors yeah. to that. And I know that around Madrona Farm, um, there was a huge campaign to, to yes. buy the farm and put it into a land trust. Yes. Tell me about and that. Well, um, the, the book that I'm giving you. Let me, let me do you, a feature I mean, on this book. Let me, let me get the camera focused on this. It's called Saving Farmland, The Fight for Real Food. You, you yes. carry on talking. Just the well, um, this really uh, changed me because um, this is uh, many years, 14 years of my husband and I mm -hmm. shenanigans trying to save farmland and um, special places from development. And um, it kind of evolved into our own situation yes. happening. And then we decided to be a model and do something beautiful. Yeah. So um, we donated an inheritance and raised $2.7 million. But yeah. 3,500 people in Saanich and the CRD donated. That's and fantastic. this completely uplifted me from a state of just, you know, obstacle and, you know, yeah. we can't do it to, you know, when we all work together, we really can move yeah. mountains. And I call it the spirit of Saanich and um, mm -hmm. my husband's grandmother was the co-founder of the Victoria Natural History Society Ruth really? Chambers that and a Cullen. Going back a long time right? yes. yes so um, when I when I moved into the house at Madrona yes the attic was full of this history of Saanich residents Whoa. called the Saanich Greenbelt Association there you go and they were responsible literally for our parks and special areas today well so I when we lived on Interurban Road often on Conway Road we were in the Greenbelt oh. Oh, and yes. to realize that that Greenbelt had existed since, I believe, 1970 or mm -hmm. somewhere around there, mm -hmm. which meant that development beyond the Greenbelt didn't happen. Yes. And you cross the Greenbelt, and it's, it's suburban, high-density yes. housing. Other side, it's farmland. Yeah, so it, um, we call that now our urban containment boundary. Yes. And um, areas inside the urban containment boundary are where we plan for density. There's yes. services, and yeah. you know that's climate change, logical yeah. density. And then there's the areas outside the urban containment yeah. boundary, and which um, is rural. Rural. So and then from buffers from being a farmer and and actor, that's a lot of. I know how hard work farming is. You then something made you want to run for Saanich Council. Why did you think that? What made you dr desire to do that? Okay. Well, to tell you the truth, so yeah. I come from the Land Conservancy and Rain Coast Conservation yes. Foundation, yes. and I've been on a quest for exemplarship in land use and for one best of practices. Best words. practices, yes. and yes. one of those people that I met um, was a councillor at Saanich called uh, Vic Derman. Vic Derman, yeah. And I found out that he was a co-founder of the Land Conservancy, and then all of a sudden we got talking, and right. you know he was instrumental as well as councillor Dean. Murdoch, yes. and actually we sold 3.5 acres to San the district of Saanich, yes. which was a Gary Oak corridor, right. so very exciting. Um, but when Vic Derman passed away, um, yes. that was, to me, a, a, a really big deal, right. and my, was he was a, a hero uh, uh, over that now. Yeah. He was a hero of mine, and I felt that within mm. my entire existence. And um, at his funeral, yes. um, David Coverley said to me, he goes, you know, Natalie, I think Vic would be very happy if you stood up. So I just did it. And um, yeah, so I'm not mm -hmm. um, one of those politicians that's um, very smooth or, <laughs> you know. I <laughs> career in politics, it's just passion uh, from yes. commitment. Yes, and yeah. um, land use is my passion, yes. emulating the sustainable practices, the Coast used and yes. the reverence of which they um, administered yeah. their land use. So returning to that reverence. So, so Saanich has got a population of what, 120,000? Um, 114,000, yes. And there are nine mayors and council. Yes. So that's a very, the people of Saanich chose you to be one of their representatives, right? To that's help right. govern and decide right. their future. That's right. And I have to ask, like, 
how's it been? I mean, you're suddenly, suddenly sitting in all these meetings. <laughs> well, it's not as fast as I thought it would be. I thought I'd get right in there, I'd have this platform, and then ch -ch 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 -ch. well, it's yeah. not quite that fast. Right. Um, but um, so far, it's been a very exciting process, and I'm learning how to work with the council, yes. which I've been a free agent, and yeah. I am independent. I didn't take any money from developers yes. or anyone right. wishing um, to get appl yeah. applications approved. So yeah. I'm fully independent, yeah. and um, I do have a sort of a group of Saanich residents that uh, that I knew before I got yeah. elected that are conservationists, and I call them exemplars. And um, so I've, they're yeah. part of my think tank, yeah. and um, yes. But, you, but also you know that if there's nine of you, if you want to get something through, you have to have five people voting That's for right. it to have a majority. That's right. That's right. So you've got to work with the other councillors yes. to get what you want. and part of that, well, you know that I'm a child educator, so I used to be called Miss Frizzle. So <laughs> I, the, didn't, I didn't know Miss Frizzle. Okay, well, <laughs> and I used to drive a school bus full of kids and take them out in the forest, so yeah. um, out to Brotherstone Road and yes. different places. But, um, you know, now I really do need to get all of my council on the bus. Yeah. And um, so my agenda Yeah, I guess really so. what's your big agenda we want to achieve over the next three years, um, four years? Yes. Well, there's quite a bit of stuff. Okay. Um, Reconciliate. Okay, so we've had some successes. Um, in the inaugural ceremony, um, we were able to get territorial acknowledgements to Saanich. Okay. So um, here, I'll say one thing. Yes. Okay, so here's one of the very exciting things that I've learned since being on the outside and now on the inside is that the district of Saanich is far greater than, it, than anyone knows, really. And there's a gap in understanding from what the district is doing to what the public knows. Right. So they, it's almost like they have a humility, and a, um, so they need a cheerleader. And well, so they, have that, they have that big block, office block, where they all meet and live, um, and everyone else is going around there. There's yes. a bit of a not mixing enough, maybe. Well, they, they, they're in departments, which yes. works for them. Yeah. But for me, I want to be their cheerleader because really, Saanich is an exemplary municipality. We're award-winning. We have yeah. award-winning environmentalism. And so what are you most proud of that Saanich, as a council, has done and is doing? Um, oh, boy. Well, our quite a few things. Yeah. Um, so we've got our inaugural um, stuff going on with yes. territorial rights and improving yes. our relationships with First Nations, which is paramount to me because yeah. it's key to understanding land use. Yes. I feel we've um, made big strides on forwarding the step code and um, moving towards a more economically uh, fair society where... So i got to hold yes. you up there. The step code is the process of making b building retrofits more efficient That's right. to address That's the climate right. crisis. That's yes. right. So okay. we've made moves together so um, it's it's really nice to share our collective yeah. works and um, yeah. you know working independently I'm not used to doing that so from now on you yeah. know it's this is what we've achieved together yeah. we've done oh one of the exciting yeah. things for me was um, my first motion at the I'm a water commissioner yeah. so my first motion at the water um, district was um, to put forward a motion to oppose the highway through the Sioux Hills. To protect the Sioux Hills yes, from uh, the highway going through them. Yes, yeah, so for me, um, there's a lot of things going down and in Saanich, and uh, you know, we've kind of, we're well, you now... Know, on, on that one, I heard John Horgan on the radio, and there's pressure in Sioux to build another road, and he said, I got so many emails and so many people wrote saying how precious the Sioux Hills were mm -hmm. and don't just drive a highway through it. So he's backed right off on that because of that kind of pressure. Oh, well, we're waiting to see what happens. But yeah. initially, I got in interested into conservation by the people who protected the Sioux Kills. Mr. McDuffie, Chris mm -hmm. Genovalli, Ray Zimmerman, Alice yes. Spriggs, Metty, all those yes. people, those people yes. that really cared so much yeah. and created that legacy. Yeah. So that's what initially right. got me into this spirit. So, so about five minutes ago, I got sidetracked asking you what you loved about Saanich Council. But you, before that, I was asking you what's your ideal agenda, what you want to achieve personally? Personally, um, for me, uh, a, a, a an, an environment of fairness and equity, reconciliation, um, so acknowledgement um, yeah. of rights. There's the rights of future generations, there's the rights of indigenous people, there's the rights of property owners, and yeah. um, 
I'm asking for consciousness and consideration in this climate change emergency right. that we look to all our rights yes. and try to cohabitate yeah. and um, with respect and I think that we can do that right. um, you know many people fear getting involved in the reconcili okay. reconciliation yes. path. Yeah. Um, so continue yes. with your agenda. We'll come back to the climate emergency. Yes. I want to address that separately. Yes. But what else is on your, your vision for what you um, want to achieve, right? Strangely, um, okay, so tragedy of the commons. My interests are economic, cost-effective uh, public services and govern yes. governance. So yeah. it's very important for me that we shift to a carbon-based polluter pay economy and not the taxpayer so that's um, in works right now and we're sort of moving to that area because um, one of the ways to recognize the exemplars is not by allowing um, you know land to become damaged by others um, yeah. it's very important safety is very important to me and um, at Saanich um, we have some vacancies in our fire and yeah. police and quite quite okay. substantial yeah. so that is a very important yeah. um, thing to me um, to ensure that those vacancies yeah. in my four-year term are filled and to make sure believe it or not in dealing with our um, economic resources and endemic yeah. biodiversity in Saanich we actually need technology so, so I get the feeling that sometimes you must wake up in the morning and, and it, it, there are so mm. many issues that you have to deal with yes. and they can easily mm. drown you and you've got to then, what are my priority issues and how do I drive them for the ones you are the champion for? Yes, um, my, my uh, objective here is to protect biodiversity, right. to ensure the biological diversity strategy is implemented, yeah. to um, try and um, align our uh, actions with our words right. in so Senate. When we were talking before, you gave me this little flyer called Tree Force, it's taking, taking a stand together. Yes. What, what is Tree Force? Okay, uh, it's really <laughs> exciting and it kind of puts the worst part of my job and the best part all at once. Right. So, you know, many people contact me when trees come down for a variety of reasons yes. and um, they're on different roads. So there's the people on Finnerty, there's the people on Fillets, there's yes. the people from the Sioux Hills, the Grange Road and all these um, roads. And yes. um, they start emailing me and they talk about, you know, their despair and their global grief and their tree love and and councillor chambers and so I'm not alone I have them yes. coming into the chamber and I'm yes. um, standing up for the trees but what they don't have is each other so they don't really know that there's another group right. out there so um, the other night at the horticulture center of the Pacific yes. I wanted to network all these people together really? yes. to bring the tree force together yes. because nobody owns the tree force the tree force is a life force yes. and really um, yeah. I really see this climate crisis as about like sequestration and taking climate change into your own hands and you know we do have a choice every day we can be the exploiter or we can be the regenerator yeah. the sequester and that's what well, I really the enough. trees are storing carbon and they're also protecting the water yes. in the watershed and the soil. Yes, and they're feeding the soil, so yes. the andelites yeah. feed the soil. How did the evening go with the tree falls? It was uh, very nice and very <laughs> inspiring yeah. and um, they liked it very much. So now there's this sort of cloaked, they can network together cloaked cape contact list yes. for each other. So, yeah. you know, they can meet each other. So it's, it's, a, it's a different technique. So. Yes. Well, I've always understood that a councillor, it's very difficult to achieve change on your own unless you've got yes. a community group advocating for something yes. to get behind you and then you can go to the head of the, head of the parade and help make it happen. Yes. But unless people come and say, we need to protect yes. nature, protect trees, yes. protect biodiversity, yes. it's all going to get lost in the shuffle. And that is the best part of my job. It's that, and I call it the spirit of Saanich, yes. and it is the foundation. And these people, yeah. you know, we have brilliant people, scientists, ecologists, foresters, and yeah. I mean, they're, they're our residents. And so calling on their expertise yeah. is something I love to do. So let me, is the complex issue, the climate crisis, yes. which is an emergency. Mm -hmm. I've worked on climate for 25 years, mm -hmm. and I have a saying to people that if you think you understand climate, and you haven't had that horrible sinking feeling in your belly, like, oh my God, you mm -hmm. really haven't understood it. 
in the last two months, the term climate emergency has been used much more widely. And yes. the group in London, 800 people got arrested you know, early last weekend under uh, the Extinction Rebellion. Right. When you talk to people in Saanich Council staff, residents, do they understand the nature of emergency and how quickly we need to act? Um, no, I don't think so. Mm. And that's why people like um, that have experience with the changes are really important. Yeah. Um, so as a farmer, I know that the zonations for seeds and the flowering time yeah. for pollinators are changing and it's an emergency. I know that um, the springs are late and you know the honeybee only comes out at 9 degrees Celsius. Yeah. We have 450 species of native bees in British Columbia yes. yeah. and our 35 to 40 species of bumblebees yeah. and you know our great Canadian yeah. bumblebee so comes out and there's still snow on the ground. Wow, so I so know that Saanich's climate action plan is for yes. a 80% reduction by 2050 and 100% renewable energy by 2050. But to me, that it's way too late. Right. The, the pressure I'm reading around is we've got to get to, well, the Extinction Rebellion is saying 100% by 2025. Mm -hmm. When my first book on climate solutions came out in the year 2000, I was arguing for 80% by 2025. <laughs> is is Saanich moving fast enough? Um, I don't, I think that, yeah. you know, Saanich is a big ship and, yes. and I love that because yes. we do everything on civic engagement. Our official community plan, our founding documents, yeah. local area plan, they are all connected and they're based on people's um, participation and work. So um, in order to change the boat, we've got to re-engage yeah. with our communities yes. um, because that's a very important part of who we are. We yeah. do more consultation than any other municipality. Yeah. So um, yes, we're changing the boat. Yeah. And um, once we get everybody on the right side, that boat's really gonna move. Yeah. And, um, but I mean, like I, I consider it like a pot of uh, kernels of popcorn, right? We've got the temperature on and I think um, Guy, I think yeah. we're very close to a critical mass of popped kernels. And well, I read the analogy just yesterday that if we were, you know the, the, the canary in the coal mine, you took a canary down yes. the coal mine yes. to see if it's li living, you can breathe yes. the air. If it drops yes. dead, get out of here. Mm -hmm. He said, on the climate, we'd be knee deep in dead canaries yes. if people understood yes. the true data. Yes. Because, but it, it's, a, it's a complex crisis to tackle because the emissions impacts we're seeing today are the result of our burning fossil fuels yes. 30 years ago. Yes. What we burn yes. today is going to impact children in 30 years time. Yes. And we look around and it's a sunny day and everything seems fine. And then suddenly yes. you're hit by a flood or hit by a forest fire, you're hit by a drought and it's, oh my God. Or a windstorm and the fairies don't come and it comes yeah. quite obvious that our three days of food and our surplus of food on the island yeah. is very real. Yeah. And um, this, the winter storms, um, I'm always advocating for um, important yeah. and extending um, Saanich Fire and Police Emergency Services because, yeah. you know, we are really an well, island here. I had a, a Adrian Carr's a um, Green Card yes, Councillor in yes, Vancouver. Yes. And she was asking me for ideas and advice about how can they speed up stuff. And I said to her, if I was really in charge of all this thing, I think we need to look at it the way we did during World War II and get every household engaged. Because every household in World War II was engaged in growing food, in building mm -hmm. a bomb shelter, in blacking out the windows at night. So I'm looking to have a volunteer, the okay. idea of every 50, every 50 people has a volunteer who's helping them organize and meet together mm -hmm. to find ways to reduce their emissions, but also to do emergency planning. Right, so, like a cause, tree? Because for emergency planning with the three days food supply, we need to work together yes. to help each other. Yes, yes. But so it's a massive, you know, you need a, you know, huge number of volunteers of every 50 people in Saanich, whatever that comes to it, so, uh, you know. Yes, and we need to protect our farmland soils because soils are a keystone to our food security. Yeah. And here in Saanich, our soils are a result of 14,000 years of Coast Salish management. We yes. have the best soils in Canada and they're yeah. endemic and it's really important that we yeah. protect those because th our soils contain biochar. Yeah in them, which is, um, yeah. you know, buried carbon. I know, yeah. From, so we, we, yes. we've only got a few minutes left. Yes. We've, we've, time has flown. So um, your advice to, to people in Saanich or in Victoria who are listening to you as a councillor with all your experience, what do you want to sum up and, and say to people about what we need to do together? 
Okay, well, I think that we can all be a force for good, for the climate, yes. for each other, taking care of people, planet in place, yes. over profit. And I think that we are making things so complicated. Climate change solutions are not something out here, they're yeah. something right here. Yeah. When you wake in the, up in the morning every day, you have a choice. Today, am I gonna be, you know, am I gonna flow yeah. down that, you know, meandering creek, or am I yeah. gonna become a steward? Am I gonna make a difference? Right. Am I gonna plant a tree? and we, our hands, you know, are, we have green thumbs yeah. and um, really um, we cannot build ourselves out of this uh, climate change crisis or yeah. affordability crisis. So, um, but indefinitely um, planting you, trees on Vancouver yeah. Islands. Andrew yes. Weaver has uh, also done a moratorium. I did a moratorium. Yeah. I was defeated. Moratorium on? Um, tree cutting in Sanit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but um, when I saw him at the AVICC, I yeah. said, I, I wish you luck. I hope it's yeah. better than mine. I mean, we, my household, we went to we, heat pump for the house, for, for you know, zero fossil fuels, electric car, vegetarian diet, growing organic food. Basically, and then we're working to protect the trees locally. So basically, it's not that, <laughs> it's not difficult. No, it isn't. It's not difficult. No, it isn't. And you know, you know we, I, I was just out hiking in Todd Creek, England, and I looked down at the vanilla leaf. Yes. And the, villainy, the vanilla leaves, yes. are they're all solar panels. They move with the sun, and you know, when yeah. I came down, they were all like that, yeah. and then on the way, and it's just like, all we have to do is look at what's around us. Because our grandparents lived in a world of, you know, extraction, harvesting, take what you can, and I... Yes. I see a future that I call a new ecological civilization and a whole yes. deep new set of values. And I see people wanting to live those values, even if yes. they don't know the how to do it and get caught up in plastic bags, you get stuck yes. in the little bits and pieces. But I think that I can feel that change sitting there in people's hearts, needing champions like you to give expression to it. Yes, uh, well I articulate it that we need to, you know, improve our, we need to um, develop a reciprocal relationship with nature. We can't just take, take, take. Right, yeah. And we can become propagators and sequesterers and we can actually interact. Yeah. And when we interact, we actually heal the very, very old dichotomy of the separation between yes. humans and the environment. And it's yeah. a healing place. So w rather than going out to exploit, when we go into ecosystems, we can look for, for keys of yeah. success. Oh, there's a, you know, you know, bees are terrestrial well, ecosystems. An understanding that each of the species is a, is a being, not, not a thing, yes. but an actual being that yes. it's, it's got spirit that lives there, that it's its home, right? Yes. And, and yes. work to finding that harmony that we've obviously lost in, in, yes. you know, in the recent years. Yes, the synergy. You yeah. know, I think, you know, I think of the synergy when I think of, you know, bees only see in UV. Right. And when the flowers are ready to yeah. be pollinated, the petals have a landing, yeah. a landing strip that only the bees can see. And if we carry on using pesticides that are killing the bees, we have no pollination, we have no food, just no. making these connections. No, 35% right? of the foods most prominent in the human diet and 75% yeah. of flowering plants rely yeah. on insect pollination. Well, look, time's so short, but I want to thank you for being a thank champion you so for much. nature. Well, nature thank thanks you. you too. Thank you so Vic much. Vic Derman thanks thank you, you thank for you. sort of taking on his role. Thank you. Um, there's yeah. a few of us. Yeah, so my guest today has been Natalie Chambers, who is one of the champions for nature in the Greater Victoria region, is a Saanich councillor and a farmer. Okay. My name's Guy Dornsey. This has been the show Change the World. If you like this kind of discussion, tune in next week for more. And find a way to make a difference yourself. You know, it's spring, it's nature. Get out there and find some relationship that brings you beauty and meaning. And thanks for watching.